Hello, stay right where you are. The next hour is nothing but the best kind of news. The next hour is something good. <laughs> Do it like this. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> this is amazing. Hello and welcome to Something Good. I'm Keith Garvin. For the next hour, we are going to take a look at good news and good news only. And I'm Christine Noel. All seven Grand Media Group stations around the country continue to showcase the stories that make people smile. And there are so many ways individuals are helping out one another. Like these kids who were more concerned with giving gifts than receiving. I'll still be donating year after year after year. Speaking of giving, how about this story? A wife who saved her husband's life by giving more than she ever thought she could. I can't go on without him. I need him in my life just as much as he needs me. More on that life-saving moment later on, but we start today's show in Detroit, where a high school basketball team started a group text. They made a mistake and added the wrong number. In hindsight, maybe they added just the right number. See, the mistake led the team into an NFL locker room and ended up creating moments the basketball team will never forget. text for the Notre Dame prep freshman basketball team was created to talk about practice and ride sharing. Vinny Tartaglia was in charge of adding cell phone numbers. We were trying to add people and the last person to be added was Luca and I was the one that was trying to add him but I mistyped the, uh, the, the phone number and it was one digit off. So last week a stranger, not their teammate Luca, was suddenly included. So then he said, do you know who I am? You guys did it and that's the picture he sent. And he said, I can promise oh, you I'm so, not Luca before sending it. So he said, I'm Sean Murphy Bunting and they didn't know who he was and then I said, he's like, he's in the NFL. The guy texts the group this picture of Michigan native and Tampa Bay Buccaneer cornerback Sean Murphy Bunting. And everyone was just skeptical because like, it's definitely not an NFL player, right? Soon the group text ran its course, but that's not the end of this story. All of a sudden, a FaceTime call came in. Leonard Fournette kind of just walked us around the locker room and showed us all the players. So I'll start from Sean Murphy Bunting, Leonard Fournette, uh, Levante David, Mike Evans, Richard Sherman. And then at the end, we were just like, where's, where's the goat? Yes, even the GOAT joined the FaceTime call, and everyone about lost their minds. And I'm a Michigan fan too, and I told them like, oh, go, go Blue, we're going to be OSU. The Super Bowl champions made these boys year in just about 30 minutes time. They didn't have to do that for us. Like, they could have easily just said, I'm going to leave this group chat, and then they could have just left. So how did this epic FaceTime call end? With Murphy Bunting saying, ball out this season. Bye. Boise, Idaho, six years ago. I was walking down the corridor and I started feeling like I was getting a little lightheaded. For some reason, I started to fall. Don Wilson doesn't remember anything after that. I ran over to him. Everybody was, you know, just walking on past and could see that he was in distress. Doreen Lundberg was walking out of the restroom at the airport and saw Wolfson on the ground. No one was helping him. And I knew that once I found out that he wasn't breathing and I wasn't getting a pulse, I wasn't hearing a breath that we had to start CPR. She started compressions, calling out for help. I hear a whole bunch of commotion down the terminal. Corey Woods heard her. People were kind of gathered around uh, asking for help and trying to figure out what was going on. Um, and that's when I kind of jumped up to see what I could do. The doctors subsequently told me at that time I was clinically dead. My heart had completely stopped. 
conveniently enough, between me and the situation, there was an AED uh, that was mounted on the wall. Together, Doreen, Corey, and an automated external defibrillator brought Don Wolfson back to life. He was rushed to the hospital where he underwent surgery to implant a defibrillator to prevent his heart from stomping again. After he recovered, Don tracked down Doreen. She's a flight attendant. And she had already missed her first flight. It was very unusual, she told me this subsequently, that she was bumped off of her second flight. Who wasn't even supposed to be there that day. It was just a fluke that I was actually there at the time. I'm sure we Neither there. was Corey Woods. He was scheduled to fly out sure earlier that day, but his flight was overbooked. And there's something else very unique about Corey. Uh, I'm actually a Red Cross instructor. Uh, part of my job at the school that I work at is to teach our students, but also our faculty and coaches and staff, uh, CPR, AED, and first aid skills. And it turns out he had the perfect partner in Doreen Lundberg. I work for a major airline and we have to do our CPR training every year. She had just recertified. I don't proselytize. I don't tell other people what to believe or what to, who to believe in. But I really believe that there, were, there was something very significant that it interceded here. I believe in the, the angels that were sent to save me. It was just not my time to die. He's his family. Don and his family are now my family. There's when, Once you do CPR on somebody, there's a tie to them. Don refers to you as one of his angels. How do you respond to that? Well, it, it certainly, uh, it, it means a lot. Um, it, it, it really does. Everyone wants to uh, make a difference. Two months after suffering sudden cardiac arrest, Don Wolfson walked his daughter down the aisle. Ready? Come on. He and his wife now have a grandson who lives with them. And they saved me. So they are my heroes. They are my heroines. And I am forever indebted to them, as is my family. Grateful this Thanksgiving. There you go. Ready? And every day to the angels that have given Don Wolfson more time. Good throw. On paper, it was just another regular high school football game for Perry McClure battling district foe Bath County. But for sophomore Landon Catlett, it proved to be an unforgettable night. You can hear it on the video. One of my best friends, Aaron Pruitt, he said, score touchdown. Oh, it's touchdown. And then as soon as I scored, I just thought about my dad and how he had coached me from when I was a little kid all the way through high school. 25 years ago, his dad, Eric Catlett, was in a similar scenario, a shining moment on the gridiron, kicking the game-winning field goal for the Blues against Rockbridge County. <laughs> the then multi-sport athlete would go on to instill athletics not only in his son, Landon, Troll and making me dribble three balls in the basement on Sunday morning. But the community as well, including the likes of Evan James Cook. Growing up, I say everybody just wanted to be like Eric. He was a nice dude. He really helped everybody out. He was often described as the ultimate family man and life of the party. As an avid fisherman, he even found light on the days that the fish weren't biting. No fish! He was always wide open. It was, a never, it was never a dull moment when he was at home. Eric's infectious spirit touched all whom he came in contact with, which is why the community continues to grieve the loss of a husband, father, and mentor after blood clots reached his lungs and heart following an auto accident earlier this year. When you first heard the news, what was, what was your reaction? I was heartbroken. I don't even know how to describe the feeling. It was just a piece of my heart kind of like, fell off. Evan was one of the first teammates to reach out to Landon after the tragic loss, saying it's not only what he wanted to do, but rather what he needed to do. It's just really my job to be there as a, as a best friend or slash brother. That's just really our relationship. We always there when each other needs each other. We got each other for advice. Playing with heavy hearts, Landon and his teammates have continued to suit up with an unexpected added touch. That's a 15. Carolina Blue. When you first saw it, 
What was, what was that like? You taking the field and you seeing all those white helmets? It just showed that like the football team really cares for me. The community is there for me. With unwavering support, Landon keeps in mind a simple motto his dad would always say. Do what you can while you can. And with that comes moments like this. I got to do it for him and that I wouldn't be this good if, if it wasn't for him. I think people are looking for positivity right now and for a good feel. We'll look no further than the story of Frank Richardson, who is using his influence to bring help and joy to those not as fortunate. The Houston native has turned to social media to make a difference. And you wanted the beef burgers, right? Well, yeah. Right here. Okay. He is using TikTok and other platforms to introduce the world to several of his friends, and the world has responded. Take Perry, Adair, Angelo, and Becky, for instance. They are four visually impaired friends Richardson has been volunteering with for more than 20 years. Starting last year on TikTok, Richard began chronicling his trips with the group to grocery stores, the movies, and the like, and followers wanted to help. They started sending money to pitch in, so Richard set up GoFundMe accounts for each one. Richardson says he has yet to see any of his helpful followers in person. Think about that, man. Think about that. We're never going to meet. We're complete strangers, and we build this relationship because I have now virtual friends that, you know, we have conversations on the phone or through direct messages or whatever, um, and they want to help. The sound of a nail gun echoes through Paramore. And Teresa DeFeria couldn't be happier. Pop, 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 pop. And I knew them shingles was going on. I said, hallelujah. Did I the big day? Did I the big day? I was like a little kid when the truck pulled up. I was out there too like this. <laughs> I was so happy. Happy because her home is finally getting the roof it's needed for years. Finally going on, finally going on. We first introduced you to DeFeria two years ago. Now this over here. A tree fell on her home after a storm. Living on disability assistance and social security didn't leave much room for repairs. But News 6 viewers stepped up, donating thousands to her GoFundMe account. How are you? Good to see you. Her story made an impression on Glenn Roberts, too. Hi, darling. <laughs> Roberts owns First Class Roofing. The company donated labor and material. And everything and meeting her, she's just, I mean, you just gravitate towards her, you know, just a good person. And uh, like I said, it's just something that touched us. And we were like, yeah, this is something we definitely want to do. But progress has been slow. Contractors found structural problems. Permitting created more delays. Then here is the, um, this is a closet. It's turned the into a complete room. rebuild. DeFeria key. has been staying with friends while she waits. They were kind enough, um, the Reddings were kind enough to let me stay there. Yes. All the while remaining patient, a seemingly permanent smile on her face. But if you're patient and keep trusting in God, he'll send the right people at the right time. It's just absolutely, positively, Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is amazing. Inspired by shows about the Alaskan frontier and feeling frustrated by restrictions of pandemic living, Michael Collins strapped on a backpack last January and started walking to Alaska. I did not really have much of a plan. I knew that I needed to go northwest. The former soccer player had no experience with backpacking or camping, but he literally so took the journey it. one step at a time. So this is about me and my walk with God. Um, and also my craving for... Um, an adventure that is uh, a bit more primitive and a bit more in the other direction than the, today's common adventures. The philosophy uh, led him to right, unexpected I, paths I and generous game. people. How's it going? If somebody stops by and gives you a turkey leg and a subway sandwich, it's amazing. So thank you, Jesse. A stranger in New Mexico even welcomed him into her home just as February storms were blowing in. Snowing, 
about four degrees. I am so thankful that I had a place to stay. It wouldn't be his last battle with Mother Nature. You're beautiful. I'm sorry for bothering you. I and yes, he had encounters with rattlesnakes and bears. And obviously it gets your heart pounding. But it's the mental obstacles that he overcame on the trail that he's most proud of. Looking back on the, on the trip, you know, it was really hard. Um, it was really grueling. It took a lot of endurance. And not only that, I learned about patience and I learned about, you know, self-control. After a ferry ride to Ketchikan, Collins made it to Alaska exactly nine months after he left San Antonio. He's not sure what comes next, but that's okay. And I learned quickly along the way that it was just one step in front of the other. And one of the most valuable experiences that I learned from that journey is just being very present. Hey everyone, we have so much good news to share that we can't fit it all into this show. Search Something Good Show on YouTube to find hours of the best stories around. Amazing stories like this one. A close call caught on camera. See how this little one saved her family home. He was brushing his teeth and then the, and then the fire came. And I'm walking out of the room still brushing my teeth and I couldn't comprehend it. And you know what I mean? Like as soon as you see it, you're like, there's no way that this is going on right now. Scan the QR code to see the amazing conclusion to this story and so much more. Once you get there, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share, because who does not need more good news in their life? Now, back to the show. It's the moment Christina Haas spent the last four years working toward. Earning a first degree black belt in karate this weekend, becoming the first person with Down syndrome to do so at Zone Martial Arts School. It's just power. I like to feel power. I want to be straight. When Christina puts on this belt, it's a moment her parents will never forget. It was joy, but also the same. I was so proud of her because she has been working so hard. <laughs> More than a dozen grueling tests over the years for Christina, challenging physical and mental endurance, from takedowns and defense to breaking boards. Like back choke, front choke. At 29 years old, Christina handling it all flawlessly. Louisa and Michael Haas say their daughter is fearless and encouraged the family to take up karate, including her dad and younger sister Gemma. She pushed me to go. She pushed all of us to go every day. She would send me tech. She's not the quitter, that's for sure. The instructor here at Zone Martial Arts told me that Christina had to stop coming here during the beginning of the pandemic. She missed more than a year, 15 months to be exact, and they thought they would never see her again as a student. But Christina was determined to go through these doors to earn that black belt. And that's exactly what she did. Christina doing what she learns at Zone Martial Arts, being in the zone, staying on target, and following through, inspiring many along the way. Hidden in the heart of Third War is a spot unlike any other. There's music, drinks, even chess. It all creates a certain vibe, making this the spot. It just took right off. Aaron and his wife, Adaphne, are the owners of the dive bar. What made it so smooth is we were very successful right away. But almost two decades ago, when the former engineer approached his accountant wife about the concept, her reaction? Oh, no. <laughs> they did it anyway. But we weathered the storm. Now it's bigger than a bar. This is just the beginning for us. Much bigger. This is the Spot Edo, located in the Gray's new shopping center down the road from Third Ward. It feels great because uh, a couple of years ago, this was just a piece of dirt. And uh, she had the vision to visualize this whole concept. Including a way to pour back into the community. We wanted to take our resources and see what we can do to plant some seeds in the community and watch other businesses grow. In October, they launched the Community Business Investment Program, 
providing one third ward small business owner with a partnership valued at $50,000 and their own storefront. It's a big deal for you. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. Like I said, um, I was very nervous, um, but you know, sometimes you got to leap. Meet the winner, Bryce Redhead, known as Red. He's the owner of Red's Juice Joint, currently located inside the Body Shop Gym in Third Ward. Did you ever think you'd be in this position four or five years ago? No. <laughs> in fact, it was honestly a leap that I had no choice but to make. Last year, unfortunately, uh, during the pandemic 2020, uh, I ended up getting laid off because of because of COVID. And then this. Yeah. Red will soon be the owner of two juice joints. Be located right here. And these business owners are serving up opportunities for generational wealth. The more uh, of us that are well off, the more impact we can have as a whole. Nine-year-old Bethany Aguilar is a hard-working little entrepreneur. She creates these crayon crafts and succulent plants to sell so she can buy all of this. I don't know what you're looking at, but <laughs> what I'm looking at is a bunch of toys, okay? No how much, but a bunch. <laughs> but this room of toys isn't for her. It's for the Christian Assistance Ministries Emergency Toy Closet. It serves families in need during Christmas. I saw a boy on TV and he was doing the same thing actually. And I said I wanted to do the same thing and that's how everything started. She was volunteering at places when she could barely even, you know, see it, see the tabletop or whatever. Seeing people feel happy and I like how their hearts are warm and my heart gets warm. Most of all, she says she thanks God. I think he can do miracles right now. Still right now, in church, in the hospitals, everywhere. One day I can change the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to a happy ending for all the kids. <laughs> these ring doorbell cameras, somebody comes up to your doorstep and you get a notification on your phone. Well, for the family that lives in this East Point home, they're getting notifications all throughout the day simply because people from all over Metro Detroit are coming to this doorstep and dropping off gifts in this black bin for Dominic's Christmas wish. It's nice. It's a beautiful thing that, you know, our community has come together. Dominic, her son, is a 12-year-old boy who has been collecting donations for those wow, less fortunate okay, so than him since he was three. I just want to give back to those who need more. That drive to give back comes from memories of Dominic's past. We had remortgaged my home after a divorce with um, a non-reputable mortgage company, and they ended up taking our home and not telling us. So we just got a knock at the door and said you had to be out and we were clueless. At that time, Dominic was exposed to many young people who were in need of shelter and food. It was just depressing to watch. But it's those memories that keep Dominic's Christmas wish alive. Because if we had more kids like Dominic, the world would be a better place. I'll still be doing this. I'll still be donating year after year after year. I have a $25 advance auto parts gift card. The gift cards are leaving people in tears. It's okay. You take a moment. It's okay. Astonished. Advance auto gift card. No! And overwhelmed. This way I don't have to give you a ticket, right? I don't want to give you a ticket. It's too hard right now. Until they ran out. Advance Auto Parts gave Orlando police only 200 gift cards, each worth $25, which to many drivers was a blessing instead of a curse of a $114 equipment violation ticket. Let me introduce you to yeah. the team. That would be great. So, this is part of our you. traffic enforcement division. News Hi. 6 wanted officers to continue getting results together. News Director Allison McGinley. Can you hold it for you? Oh, sure. If you want to. Oh, sure. Um, they're yours now. <laughs> delivered another 200 automotive gift cards to the Orlando Police Department. When we saw Eric's story, it stopped the newsroom. And, and not often does that really happen where everybody says, that's amazing. 
and we have to do something. And so that this program, this partnership that you guys have created is really what getting results is all about. We made sure to get the advanced auto part gift cards that you guys had already been giving out. WKMG purchased and donated to OPD $5,000 worth of automotive repair gift cards. So I thought you were joking. Police Chief Orlando Rolone says our donation is a first ever for his department. I think this is the first time that one of our media partners, in this case of the KMG, has actually come forward and said, we're gonna go ahead and support this program and in such a significant way. Thank you guys so much for inviting us down today. We have partnered with Homestead Creamery for many events over the last several years. Meet and greet with your local law enforcement. Some knew about the event through media advertising. Their generosity is 10% off of anything in this store. They come in wanting to meet and greet with the local law enforcement. I'd start with the ice cream if I were you. That's where you should be headed. Thank you for coming by. I tell you what we're going to do. You go into chocolate, butter pecan when it gets my turn. I chose butter pecan ice cream. It is always. It was always delicious. Good stuff. This event has been a fantastic event today. Weather has been perfect. Good. Very, Very good. good. Very good. We've had a lot of interaction with our residents of Franklin County. We saw kids with ice cream. Yeah. There was actually a dog eating ice cream outside. Well, I saw the dog, but I've got to be honest, I did not see him eat the ice cream. But I did see him drive away under the steering wheel. He loves it. I had been waiting for this moment for several weeks. When I knew it was close to happening, I spent all day checking my Monarch butterfly enclosure and setting up my camera to make sure I didn't miss it. And that Nat Geo patience paid off. It felt like a mission accomplished. I had saved at least one of the many Monarch caterpillars turned chrysalis to its final stage. And I'm not the only one who feels compelled to protect and raise Monarchs. Isabel Anaya is a fifth grade teacher at NISD's Kuntz Elementary. For 12 years, she's been protecting and raising monarchs in the school's pollinator garden that she started with her after school program, Eco Friends. We're starting to also see a decline in monarchs, and that has to do with the fact of there's climate change and the fact that, you know, humans have a huge impact on that as well. It made me feel like a fifth grader with innocent excitement, much like Anaya's students do. It's actually kind of beautiful the way, like when a monarch's in its uh, chrysalis, it turns clear and it could, you could see it's transparent. You could see the, um, the monarch's colors and it's gorgeous. When I'm in the garden because it makes me feel so calm and relaxing and um, it, gives, it gives us a break, a break from our devices. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's talk marriage vows, eternal promises to husbands and wives. They are the words usually crafted together to profess love to one another. And those words precede the words till death do us part. And for one couple in Metro Detroit, they came very close to parting. Sean McNeil, a diabetic, was in renal failure and needed a kidney transplant immediately. That's when his wife Renee went above and beyond their vows to become her husband's hero. Ask most people and they will tell you that it's just hard to find a perfect match in love. But for Sean and Renee McNeil, this kind of commitment couldn't have been foreseen. As one of my sisters said, those stars were aligned for you guys before you even knew it. You guys were meant to be together. Sean managed diabetes for 16 years until he couldn't. Suffering complete renal failure spring of this year, it became pretty clear pretty fast he needed a kidney donation. Just to give you an idea, there are about 90,000 people uh, in the United States currently waiting for a kidney transplant from a deceased donor. That's a pretty daunting number. It could take uh, five years or more to find a kidney through this route. Sean was in the crosshairs of the Grim Reaper. The first two who stepped up and said anything before anyone was my wife and my youngest son. But little did he know that his wife, 
the woman he said I do to 26 years ago had an extra I do on her honeydew list, a match of a kidney and a live donation. I think it also shows that you don't have to be a blood relative. You don't have to be a twin. Uh, all it really takes is that, you, you know, you have to be willing to donate and you have to have somebody that you care about that you would love to donate to. Some people don't get that second chance. She gave me mine and there's nothing in this world I wouldn't do or give for her. I want him to have that opportunity to live a longer life. Like you said, and we've been together for so many years. I can't go on without him. I need him in my life just as much as he needs me. Sorry. We are now, we are really a part of one, of each other. <laughs> and it's, it's, um, it, 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 it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I've always loved my wife and, and, and it's even that much more stronger now than ever. It's been a month of growth for Team KSAT, but the Clippers are out and so are the beers. No Shave November has officially come to an end. We're ready to go. Henley's Gentlemen Groomers opened the doors to Team KSAT for the big shave off today. No Shave November is a web-based nonprofit that started in 2009 and since then has raised millions of dollars that has gone toward cancer research, treatment and prevention. It's something that has impacted each team member in some personal way. The shirt I'm wearing right now was a shirt that my family put together for my uncle uh, who had and eventually died from colon cancer. Team KSAT has raised over $20,000 over the last few weeks. The team currently ranks number two in the country. Meteorologist Mike Osterhage bringing in over $3,000. And that's all thanks to, to all of you out there that have donated. I mean, we've gotten, you know, a couple of bucks, uh, you know, $500,000 donations. Although the scruff may be gone, the message is not. If we do nothing else but raise awareness about the fact that, hey, guys, we got to take care of ourselves, you know, I, I think that's a task well accomplished. Thank you for the donations. Instead of making deliveries, oh, love the candy. Dane and Powell is on the receiving end of a special oh, one just for him at Cypress Trails Park. More than $4,000 in cash as a thank you. <laughs> Powell, a faithful and favorite delivery driver in this Nakati neighborhood. When you see him, you feel better. He's just, he seems to be such a special person. They allow me to jam out, you know, to my music and bring the vibes, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. <laughs> vibes that don't go unnoticed. He also calls everyone kings and queens. These comments on social media raving about Powell's hard work, passion, and overwhelming kindness he brings every day, ingredients they say of a perfect employee. That's why Amanda Tyson organized this surprise. You can just like feel his energy um, and he just exuberates happiness and kindness and all the things. That's right, I appreciate y'all so much. Donnan is far from the classroom, strapping in for the ride of his life. I wasn't nervous. Uh, it was just a fantastic, phenomenal ride. He suited up and sat in the back seat of this F-16, joining the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, who selected him as their hometown hero. Donnan is the Seminole County Teacher of the Year. He teaches at Crooms Academy, spending the last 18 years teaching games and simulation, 3D modeling and animation, as well as teaching steel band. Friday's lesson took him high in the sky, hitting up to nine G's and looping in the air. Donnan says this was an experience he always dreamed of. Obviously, I, we make games, I've, I've played games. Um, the idea of like flying a real plane is something that I've 
like dreamed of ever since uh, I was a little kid and I was flying, you know, PC simulators when I was like 10 years old. He did great. The size of the smile on his face is as big as Florida. Don and his family on the tarmac watching every moment. This is just amazing and He's so lucky to be able to do this. His principal adds he deserves yeah. this opportunity and the recognition, saying his passion for teaching lifts his students to new heights. He's put in so many hours and so much time individually with students and their families, and for him now to have this reward, unbelievable. It was an emotional send-off Saturday for nearly 900 troops, Virginia National Guard's largest deployment since World War II. They'll spend about a year in the Horn of Africa. Linda and Ken Parker want to make sure these troops aren't forgotten. When we found out they were going to be deployed, we said, what can we do to help? The couple founded the Bedford Boys Tribute Center, honoring 19 local soldiers who died on D-Day. They decided to start Operation Bedford Remembers for the latest troops deployed. Volunteers sign up to adopt a soldier, then receive their name, birth date, and hometown. You can write to your service member using custom stationery, then have opportunities to send care packages overseas. We want their families to know that our collective communities are behind them while their loved ones are overseas. The Parkers say about 40 volunteers signed up so far. Bill Watts is one of them. I just thought it was a wonderful idea. The 74-year-old adopted a Bedford soldier with the initials TD. I could relate to being away from home and, uh, and uh, you know, it's always good to have a uh, letter to, you know, tell you that somebody's out there thinking of you. The Parkers look forward to sending their first shipment of letters and care packages in January, but are already thinking about the troops coming home. But I can assure you we're going to have one heck of a welcoming party when they get back. Even in cornhole, the Pearland Fireballers are pretty competitive. That's it. That's it. They're used to success off <laughs> and on the field, winning their latest travel team championship just last week. Right after the big win, their coach challenged them to another feat, helping those who have helped them. It was a great opportunity to give back to our community and teach the boys, hey, we're going to do something for the community. The Fireballers teamed up with another nonprofit and picked out nine less fortunate kids in Pearland to buy Christmas presents for. The boys were given background info on the kids they were matched up with to know exactly what they would want. 11-year-old Jacob got to pick out toy cars for an 8-year-old. I hope he's excited and then he plays with them when he gets them. Parents and coaches said the team was so excited they went over budget and picked out about 40 presents in all. They exceeded their goals in the shopping aisles and hope the experience will translate on the diamond and also later in life. We've always preached that teamwork is very important, accountability is very important. When somebody's down, you lift them up. And so for, for me, this is telling them, hey, your community, your community needs you, pick them up. Just to be a better person and know to help other people for yourself. Lanaya Flowers has talent and it's in the family. Her grandmother was an artist. When she passed, she had a will and all her art stuff came to me. It was a lot. It was probably enough art stuff to last a whole lifetime. Paint, brushes, clay, glue, scissors. Grandma could create anything. And she taught Lanaya at a young age that she could too. So she'll give us like cardboard boxes and stuff, have us cut it out and make fake food to play kitchen and stuff. 
and she always was showing us how to make things out of nothing. The school created an exhibit to showcase her work. Tracy Baddest is her principal. Oh my God, she is a, she is amazing. She's an amazing young lady. Lanaya is also a member of Girls Inc. She is not just an artist. She is strong, smart, and bold. When we walk around here, we know we're strong because we can use our voices. We can communicate with each other. We know we're smart because you can be smart in your own way. You don't have to be intellectually smart. You don't have to be good at math. You don't have to be good at reading. You can be smart just by knowing what's going on around you. And then bold, we're here to make a statement. We're here to show everybody who we are, what we can do, and how we can impact others around us. To get here on a U.S. postal stamp, Catherine Meyer Graham started here. After losing her husband, she took over the Washington Post in 1963 with only newspaper reporting experience. She learned quickly she would have to prove herself every day. I thought the way men thought because I've been brought up in that world. Her biggest challenge was a showdown with President Nixon and the U.S. government during the Vietnam War. The Justice Department late today asked for a federal court order to stop the Washington Post. As depicted in the Steven Spielberg film The Post, Graham had to decide whether to publish what became known as the Pentagon Papers. And the Attorney General of the United States had sent her a message, if you publish this and you are convicted of a crime as a result, the, the government can take away your television stations, which were about a third of the value of our company. Catherine Meyer's son, Don, the current chairman of Graham Holdings, tells me when his mom ultimately decided to go ahead with publishing the Pentagon Papers, she wasn't sure about it. My mother was, uh, oddly, was a CEO, but was a very, very self-doubting person. She was always saying to herself, I wonder if I'm getting this right. I wonder if I'm... I wonder if I'm not about to make some terrible mistake. We are extremely gratified. Catherine Meyer Graham was vindicated by the U.S. Supreme Court. And shortly after, through solid journalism and a commitment to truth-telling, Graham and The Post changed the course of history yet again, exposing the Watergate scandal that led to President Nixon's resignation. The fact that I was a woman made me more conspicuous. And in 1980, KMG, as we call her, was named the most influential woman in the country. It is a good lesson that somebody pretty normal, somebody who didn't have elaborate preparation, somebody who'd never been to business school, but who had good judgment and who picked great people to surround her and help her with decisions, turned out to be a really good leader. securing the houses, we putting plexiglass instead of the wood, making sure the houses is secure so nobody go in and out of them. Grady Brown is on site at this Detroit home on Ivanhoe. He and other members of the Detroit Demolition Department are stabilizing this home. I had gotten in touch with my parole officer and they had a job fair. We discussed it, my conditions, um, me just coming home from prison. I applied and I got the job. Ever since Proposal N was passed in the city of Detroit, the demolition department was given the task of creating a plan to hire Detroiters. They proposed a preference of hiring returning citizens. It was a no-brainer for me that I was going to definitely ensure that I was hiring returning citizens and providing them with the opportunity. We are public servants. Um, at the end of the day, we understand that we, we're here to serve the public, we're here to serve the residents, and ultimately we serve the community. And Grady loves the impact his work has on others. I feel pretty good. Yeah. The Zenteno spirit check, check, one, one. wouldn't be the same without middle brother Ernie, bassist of the band. We've always played with the family all our lives. When Ernie felt short of breath, he thought he better get checked out so it didn't affect his music. That's when he was informed the symptoms were signaling something major. He needed open heart surgery, but he opted for something else. They didn't do it by opening my chest, which I didn't want them to because that's a long recovery. 
Instead, he had transcatheter aortic valve implantation, or TAVI, a new alternative to open heart surgery, where interventional cardiologist Hani Janid uses a catheter inserted near the groin at the artery to reach the damaged valve. So his valve area was so narrowed, he's unable to pump blood from the heart to the rest of the body. Ernie went home the next day from the hospital. Right. Good girl, bro. And today we caught up with him walking Rosie, a rescue dog, which is another one of his passions that requires him to be wholeheartedly involved. Wow, well, you're doing great. One day, thank God. Whether they served in the Spanish American War or in Desert Storm, 500 veterans buried in Buchanan are not forgotten this Christmas. Dozens of volunteers hiked through Fairview Cemetery Saturday morning to lay holiday wreaths there we go. Look at that. on each veteran's grave. Sirens and Salutes Charity President Bill Price discovered the cemetery a year ago and noticed the fallen heroes' graves were bare. Here last year, and we saw that there were no wreaths here, but there were many veterans buried here as well as a veterans memorial. So we went and bought a wreath and we put it on the memorial. And I said, you know, it sure would be nice if there were wreaths on every every veterans' graves like we do down in Suffolk. As children lay their hands on each grave. Price says it validates his vision. I think it's most important to see kids coming because when I'm long gone and, and can't do this anymore, um, it's these guys are going to be carrying on and, and remembering our veterans um, and what they did for the country. That'll do it for our show. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can share your good news with us. Just head to somethinggood.show and share your story. It might get featured on an upcoming show. You can also watch more uplifting videos on our Something Good YouTube page and subscribe to our newsletter so you don't miss an ounce of goodness. Until next time. Stay happy and healthy.